All right, we're back. Um, let's go through the System of Inequalities review. Um, this should be posted today during our hurricane day. Um, you, if, you, if you're watching this today, you haven't gotten any of the inequality stuff. So that might be a little concerning for you, but let's do it. All right, so graph each system of inequalities. This is actually not too bad. If you were graphing this on Desmos, it's really easy to type in inequalities on Desmos. So like I can type in my first one like this, and you can see it's shading everything above the line. We have a dashed line, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if we're graphing it for real though, the best way to do this is to make sure we have y by itself. So to get rid of the plus one, we subtract plus one, uh, subtract one. So this equation or inequality would be y is greater than negative four x minus one. And we plot it kind of like we plot a line. We have a y-intercept to negative one, slope of negative four. So every time I go over one, I go down four. Over one, down four. I can do the reverse to get a bunch of points, if I can count correctly. And this is a greater than sign. So if it's, it does not have a line underneath it, we're not drawing a solid line. We're just going to put some dashed lines. And it's greater than, so we're shading above the line. So I'm going to shade everything up here. Okay. The other line is y is less than or equal to x plus 1. So it has a y-intercept of positive 1. Actually, let's make that a little bit clearer. Positive 1. And it has a slope of 1. So we are going up, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And we can get a very consistent line going here and down this way. And because this has a line underneath it, this is a solid line. So essentially, let me finish my points. But essentially what that means is we're going to include the line in our solution. So we should be drawing a solid line, even if my line drawing tool is not liking me. And this is a less than sign. So we're going to be shading everything below this line. All right. So we now want to check to see if these points are in the solution set. So negative 2, negative 4. Negative 2, negative 4 is down here. That is not. It's only shaded by purple. Negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That is not. 5, 2. 5, 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. Yeah, that's four. That's five, two. And that is four, eight, four, and then eight up would be over here. It's only shaded by blue. Zero, negative one is on the dashed line. And if it's on a dashed line, that does not count for us. Zero, one is on a solid line. On a solid line does count for us. So only points here. I'm going to highlight them in two different colors. So we have this one here, 0, 1, and then I'll do orange for the other one, 5, 2. Okay. So let's graph the next one. Um, 3y is greater than all this, so to get rid of the 3, divide everything by 3. So y is greater than or equal to x over 3 plus 1. So y is up to 1, slope of one third. So every time you go up one, you're going over three, up one over three, up one over three, and the reverse. Okay, this is a greater than or equal to sign. So solid line and greater than, so we are shading above, so. Then we are dealing with a y is less than 3x, or minus 3x. So add 3x to both sides. y is less than 3 plus 3x. So we should be shading, uh, well, 1, y-intercept of 3. So y-intercept there, and a slope of positive 3. So every time I go over 1, I should go up 3. Over 1, up 3. 
and you can go the opposite. So over to the left one, down one, two, three. Over to the left one, down one, two, three. And that should be enough. I'm going to kind of overkill it because I'm the teacher I'm supposed to. Um, to give us some good points here. This is a less than sign, so no line under it. So we're not drawing a line, we're drawing a dashed line. And this is a less than, so we're shading below. So everything below this line is included in our points. All right. Oh, wrong thing. Here we go. Okay, so let's do our points. Negative 2, negative 3, negative 2, negative 3 would be on this line, but not even touching the blue. So that's not it. 5, 5, that's looking promising. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is shaded by both. 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 is on a solid line, so that's included. Negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 1 is on the solid line, but it's not touching the purple. Negative 4, negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, that's that's not anything. And then 7, 0 would be out here. That is not being shaded by the blue at all. So those are our two solutions. So as long as things are shaded by both, they are a solution. If they're on a solid line and shaded by the other line, then yeah, it works. All right, write and graph system inequalities that shows all possible solutions. So let's take a look at this. Coffee shop wants to make a maximum of 100 pounds of coffee mixture. It costs less than $10 per pound. Shop will mix coffee that's sold at $8 per pound and with coffee has sold L $14 per pound. What are the possible mixture of the two coffee types? Okay. Whatever you're dealing with, um, two different, well, this one's going to be kind of interesting because I'm working through this along with you guys. So what I see here is this $14 per pound, $8 per pound, to me, that's telling me I'm probably going to have something that looks like 14x plus 8y. Probably. And I want this to be less than... Hmm. Okay. Let's actually forget that for just a moment. This $100 pound total. That is easy for me because... X is the number of pounds of one thing. Y is the number of pounds of the other thing. I'm comparing it to 100. And it's saying maximum. So I, this is the big number. But I could equal 100. So I'm going to do less than or equal to. So I have that thing dealt with. The next thing is this, this, these per pound stuff. And I think that was on the right track with the 8X 14Y thing. But... The problem is, is trying to see what I'm comparing it to. And this is saying, I want, I want it to cost less than $10 per pound. Well, the total, hmm. So, if this is how much that's going to cost, this is how much that's going to cost. Essentially what I'm comparing it to is ten dollars per you know for every pound of x or pound of y I'm comparing it to it. So and I'm saying I want it less than that. Okay, so I think this is how we would set it up when we're combining it. Let's give this a shot. I'm gonna try graphing it on Desmos first, and then I'll bring it over to um, my actual graph. So x plus y is less than or equal to 100. And 8x plus 14y is less than 10, open parentheses, x plus y, close parentheses. All right, 
Let's see what this looks like. Okay. So what it looks like is as long as we're less than that, like we're essentially ramping up from zero, zero. So if we're not using anything, we're spending less than $10 per pound. Um, but if we were up here, we'd be spending all of our 100 pounds in the expensive thing. So that makes sense why it works for our first equation, but doesn't work for our second equation. Okay. So that, that works for us. Um, what I'm going to do is for my scaling here, I'm going to start at 0, 0. But I'm going to make it where each one of my points is going up by 10. I'm willing to bet this thing. Oh, I'm actually a little bit off in terms of my scaling. But I'll just take it to 100. And if I use up by 10, oh my goodness, this is so tiny. Okay. If I use going up by 10, then it makes my my math and trying to figure out points fairly fairly easy where I'm not trying to divide by something obscene. All right. So I know that I have one line that starts at 100 and they cross at and the other that line ends at 100 0. So essentially I have one solid line that goes from here to here. And then my green line it looks like at 100 it's at 50. So that's a nice easy point for me to graph to. It starts here. I'm going to kind of use a cheating feature of this thing where I can draw a straight line and then I can do a partial erase and just make it a dashed line. All right. And then my shading, shade this thing. Yeah. We'll shade this thing down here. And we'll shade this thing down here. All right. So we now have this. So if I picked, um, I could say 60 comma 20 would be a possible solution. I'll do that in red. So. However, but yeah, the so 60 comma 20 would be one of the points in here. I could also pick 70 comma 20 or 50 comma 10. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ones, but that should that should satisfy both my inequalities. All right, uh, let's take a look at this one. Samantha's having a party. I only spend forty dollars on cheese. All right, she wants to have five pounds of cheese for the trays. Pepper Jack's four dollars per pound. Cheddar costs two dollars per pound. All right, this one's a little more straightforward. Cool. Um, so five pounds of cheese, x plus y is less than five. Or wait, no, she wants at least five pounds of cheese. So, um, what that means is it could equal five, or it could be bigger than five. We want to start at five pounds and go up from there. The other, so that's our at least five pounds of cheese. Only spend forty dollars. So we're comparing to forty. Pepper Jack costs four dollars per pound. Cheddar costs two dollars per pound. We're adding it up, and it could be equal to forty, or it could be less than forty. So yay, we have two equations to go by. I'm going to quickly change this to style. We're gonna make this blue, and we're going to quickly. Ah, not what I want to do. We're gonna make this one green so that we have our color coordinated cheese equations all right our two equations here x plus y is greater than or equal to five and four x plus two y is less than or equal to 40 all right and this this scales a little bit better so it looks like our maximum here is 20 I may just do by one just to make my life a little bit simpler. Five, six, seven, eight. Nah. 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And no, I'd have to do by twos. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and then beyond 22, it really doesn't matter. Okay. And then this one, I'm going to do the same thing. You can technically scale each one of these separately, but I like having my squares be square. All right. So, first equation, the first equation is the one that's comparing to 5, greater than or equal to 5. So, our y-intercept here is 5, so right between 4 and 6, and our x-intercept is also 5. And we're drawing a solid line there, and then we're just shading above that. Alright, so, shade above 5. So, that means... All of this, every single bit of this, and then just get right up to that line. Cool. The other equation is this less than 40. So we have a y intercept. No, moved the wrong thing. Okay. We have a y intercept of, undo that of 20 here. So wires up there of 20, x intercept of 10, and this is also a solid line. So I can do my cheat there, and this is shading below. So everything below this is considered a possibility. So points that would work, 2, 10. So 2, 10 is a valid point. So this would mean two pounds of jack and 10 pounds of cheddar. So that would be a valid point. All right, so that's that's it for problems three and four. Those were a little bit more involved. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's more. Okay, so let's continue with this. Um, the good news is we're using Desmos. If you're using a TI, these would be a lot more involved. So, Jose Grandfathers gives them coins each shiny visit. Nickels and dimes. Okay. These types of problems, the nickel and dimes problems, are the ones they like to give you. They really like to give you these. So, um, he always receives more than 15 coins. So, let's, let's first show nickels is X, dimes is Y. So, total number of coins, just add up the, the X and Y, and it's always more than 15. So greater than 15. The other equation is the value of the coins. So nickels are worth 5 cents. Dimes are worth 10 cents. Total value is less than $2. So I'm going to say less than 2. All right. Where are the possible combinations? Let's graph this. Really wish I could change my colors on this so we match x plus y is greater than 15. Actually, let's see if I can change my color. Yes, I can change my color. Awesome. And then down here, 0 0.05x plus 0 0.10y is less than 2. Okay, and we'll change that color to green. Awesome. So, we have our graph. And it looks like our valid kind of area goes all the way to an x value of 40. So, uh, doo -doo -doo, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, can't quite do 2. I don't really want to do 3. Um, can I get away with, what's our wires up here, 15? I'm going to do 5s. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. I'll go a little bit higher than I need to. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. 
And on this graph, also be a little fancy. So we said x is nickels. So I'm saying this. Why aren't you writing? Oh, my pencil had a mistake. Nickels. And this is dimes. OK, so let's graph our two lines. So first off, our blue line. Our blue line looks like it has a y-intercept of 15 and a x-intercept of 15. That makes life easy. We'll draw a line there. This is a greater than, so this is a dashed line. So I'm going to make my line dashed. And we're, shade, we're greater than, so we're shading above. So all of this, all of this. All right, cool. Um, and then our other line, our green line here, y-intercept of 20, x-intercept of 40. So if we connect those two points, and again, uh, this should have been a, all right, messing up my thing a little bit, but you get dashed line. And then we're shading below because this is a less than sign. So everything below here. All right, not the best drawing that I've done, but it does work for our purposes. So in terms of solutions, we're looking like a point here, as long as it's shaded by both. So that looks like 10 of each. So 10 nickels and 10 dimes, because our point is 10 comma 10, would be a valid solution. All right, oof, all right, another one. Roderick, $8 an hour. Mowing lawns. All right, wait, no. Video store. And $20 an hour mowing lawns. Okay. He wants to work more than 30 hours and $160 a week. So total number of hours. X plus Y is less than 30. Or it can equal, because no more than means that 30 works. You're starting to see that a lot of our things is just X plus Y compared to number. Get used to that. That's, that's kind of a standard equation for this. The other thing is the amount per hour. Eight for mowing or for video store, twenty for lawns, and hundred and sixty dollars per week. He wants to earn more than that. So greater than that, as long as we're adding up these two. Cool. Let's graph them. So first off, x plus y is less than or equal to thirty. And then 8x plus 20y is greater than 160. All right, and I'm going to change my colors really quick so that it matches my stuff. And it looks like we're looking at kind of useful range of 30 on the y to 30 on the x. So I think I'll do the fives just like I did on the last problem. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, no, 25, 30. Actually, what's my wires up here? Eight. Okay, I may actually do twos. I think that would work. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. All right, cool. So our first graph, the blue line, um, has a y-intercept of 30, x-intercept of 30. So we'll plot those two points. So 30 here and 30 here. It's a less than or equal to, so it's a solid line. So if we connect those points, and then we're gonna shade below. So everything below this, uh, that's not the best. Let's try that again. Oh, that's definitely not the best. Here we go. 
Anything below? Alright. That works. Other line has a wire intercept of 8, so right here, and a X intercept of 20, so right here. And this is a dash line, so I'm just going to draw dashes, and we're going to shade above it because this is a greater than sign. Everything above this. All right, cool. So a valid solution is just anything that's double shaded. So I'm gonna pick here. Um, wasn't what well, I was planning on using, but it works. So that's 10, 14. So 10 comma 14. So 10 hours. Uh, video store and then 14 hours mowing all right that would work we're almost done now I think yeah we only have two more problems cool so uh, this last couple are trying to identify what is where the inequalities that we're looking at so for the first one what we're going to do is we're going to first identify the inequalities. So this line here is looks like as a y-intercept of 6. So y, we don't have an equal sign. So it does have a y-intercept of 6. It looks like it has a slope that's negative, and slope is for every 1 that goes down, it goes over 2. So a slope of 1 half. And this is a solid line, so we know it's going to have a line underneath it, and we're shading below it. So we're doing a less than sign. Let's look at this line here. So our process, find the y-intercept, uh, find the slope, and then decide which way it's shading. So this is going to be a y-intercept of negative 4. We have a slope. It looks like every time I go over, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. So I have a slope of positive 1. And it's a solid line. So a line underneath. We're shading above it. So we're going to be greater than sign. All right, finally, this line here. It also has a y-intercept of negative 4. It looks like it has a slope where every time I go over 1, I go up 6. So slope is 6. We are shading below this line, and it is a solid line, so we're doing a less than or equal to sign. So finally, let's identify which points are valid points here. So 5, 5. 5, 5 would be out here. It's not shaded by all of them, so that's not it. 1.52. 1.52 would be right here. It is shaded by all of them, so that's good. 2, 3. 2, 3 is shaded by all of them. 2, negative 3 is down here. It is not shaded. 0, 0 is over here. It's not shaded. 4, 0 is on a solid line. It's shaded by the other two. So it would count 0, negative 4. It is on 2 of the lines, so it just needs to be lower than the blue line, which it is. So those will all count. I can see you guys having questions on this one. If you have them, please let me know. Um, which system of inequalities corresponds with the graph shown below? So let's take a look at what we have. First off, let's take a look at this blue line as a y-intercept of positive 1. So we know we are going to have a plus 1. It's a slope over 1, down 1. So as a slope of negative 1x, we are looking at a dashed line, so no line underneath. And it's shading above, so a greater than sign. The other one line, the red line, has a y-intercept of positive 3. Or sorry, negative 3 is going to be going over 1 and up 2, so a slope of positive 2, and it is a solid line that is shaded below. So this is why I should be looking for. So um, 2x minus 3 and negative x plus 1. So the expressions here are correct, but the inequalities here are not. Um, this shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a line underneath this. So a is not correct. 2x minus 3, negative x plus 1 looks good for the expressions. 2x minus 3 should be less than or equal to. Negative x plus 1 should be a greater than sign. So that looks good. 
just to quickly confirm, there's no lines underneath these two. That's off. Um, this one is a greater than sign, and this one's a less than sign. So D is also incorrect. All right. That should do it. We should be done with this. Um, I'm going to post this into OneNote, and your teacher may share it with you however they choose to do so. All right. Hope that helps. Have a good one.